This is Corey Willis with PVI, and you're listening to The Diesel Podcast. I'm Adam Blattenberg from Diesel World. Hi, this is Dan, owner of Dan's Diesel Performance. I'm Christian Roth of BD Diesel. I'm Braden Fleece, and you're listening to The Diesel Podcast. What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on The Diesel Podcast. This episode is going to be about Duramax trucks, and joining us is Eric Merchant from Merchant Automotive, and we wanted to go through you know, just a list of things that, you know, whether you got an LB7 or LML, L5P, things that can go wrong with time or with miles, just items that are, are wearable, and you know the time that we kind of all have on our hands right now and being able to get projects done, get things fixed, keep our, our work trucks going. So we wanted to ask Eric what has been you know the most popular things that they're shipping and people are calling about what it's like accommodating you know, some of the, the restrictions and the, the stay-at-home orders and everything that's going on with the pandemic and ways they're able to keep the product flowing to you guys, to dealers, to distributors, and keeping those Duramax trucks on the road. Eric Merchant, welcome back to the Diesel Podcast. I've had a blast every time we've we've chatted with you over the years and sort of have been able to you know, refresh our, our uh, knowledge and options on the Duramax platform and and uh, ways to keep them running. And now's a perfect time to do that. I think a lot of our listeners have been you know, saying, hey, I, I finally have some time to work on that project or you know, this little bit of downtime I can you know, get my, my work truck or or daily driver going so it's it's great to have you back on i look forward to catching up with you hey thanks for having me patrick look it has been a while <laughs> well i know uh over the last six to eight weeks i think everything's been been fairly uh new and crazy for everyone you know in the country but one of the the uh, the most common messages that we get are truck owners who they i think they just kind of lived with a maintenance problem on their truck or wanted to fix something and now they have the time and we've got a, a ton of new listeners that have, that have started listening to us this year and I wanted to kind of start at the beginning and have you you know introduce yourself and Merchant Automotive and, and explain what you guys work on and specialize into our listeners. Sure so Merchant Automotive is something I started in 2004 um, <clears throat> kind of as a, uh, a nighttime thing as I was working in the, in the dealership world and we started offering just some basic stuff um, on, a, on a real simple website. Was very active in the in the forums back then, and was kind of able to uh, use the Duramax platform just because of my tie-in with the GM site. <clears throat> um, that's where the knowledge is uh, most comfortable with, and, and at that time it was the taboo thing because you know the Ford and the Dodge they had a pretty good. Um, hold in the industry with 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 those engines but nobody wanted to touch Duramax and to me that was you know that was no big deal um, so we grew through the years and uh, progressed added some manufacturing expanded the website uh, product offerings that kind of thing <clears throat> and moved into kind of the, the niche where it does focus on the maintenance side of things We've never really done much with the big exotic builds uh, and all the the cool stuff I like to call it, but the but this the I want to keep my truck running type stuff. I want to solve this problem. I want to fix this issue. Uh, I don't want it to happen again type things, and that's worked out well. So we've kind of just stuck with it. That's exactly where I was when I had a Duramax. Is I had these these big dreams for what I wanted to do with it, but. I needed to get a transfer case brace. I needed to get some tie rod sleeves. I needed some other things. And I had ordered a bunch of merchant automotive stuff way back then. And that's, that's what I think of. And, and that's, that's what I needed to keep that truck running. Yeah. It's the stuff to keep it on the road, whether it be a, a rancher or a farmer or a contractor or any type of thing like that, where the guys that are just relying on the truck every day don't need breakdowns, don't need issues. And, and, and they don't mind wrenching on it themselves. So it's always been kind of our, our go-to customer, um, <clears throat> where we can just take care of them, give them what they need in the box, so they don't have to go scrambling for it, especially with the stuff that might be hard to find locally at a at a, at a box parts store or, or even some dealerships. So we just try and make it easy. Are you guys seeing a lot of a lot of uh, LB7 truck owners orders questions coming in from people, or is there a particular year range that right now you guys are? Are you seeing the most traffic from, or is it pretty much equal across the different year ranges? So the LB7 stuff has always been really strong for us from from 
obviously the fuel system issues that they have, injectors, that type of thing. Now those trucks are getting to the point where they're where they're priced more affordably, and it's like a whole new generation of ownership is coming along with them. So the the people that might not have been able to afford them when they were new, well now they can afford them as they're as they're as they're used. And they still want to keep them on the road. You get trucks that are not in the rust belt like where we are, and there's still a lot of good life in them. So the LB7 stuff has stayed really strong. Uh, another thing that seems to be gaining um, I don't know if market share is the word, but this is the LML stuff, 11 to 16, the, the, the infamous CP4 issues that they have. And while not every truck's going to need it, it you know, some guys just want to be preventive and and not have to worry about it. And those are also good trucks. It's just they just need a little maintenance here and there. I think it's been a lot of the uh, a lot of the requests we've had over the last probably eighteen months or maybe maybe two years has been for LML stuff. I think mostly because the warranties are running out and you know now the the cost to fix it falls on the owner. But I wanted to ask you more about the the CP four issues and what. What solutions that you guys have for customers out there with a with an LML? So the CP4 stuff, I certainly don't want to get into a debate on <clears throat> which way is the best way to fix it or handle it or situate it or do anything like that. Um, what we've been most happy with on our end is the SNS uh, CP3 conversion kit, and. The biggest thing with that that we like is the fact that it is emission compliant. It's a drop-in. It doesn't require any tuning or modifications. We don't have to mess with any of the EPA stuff, and it's no secret that that's obviously a, a place that we really don't want to go, especially for a vehicle that gets operated every day on a public street. Those have been those have been very successful. They they work. They they fit. They just do what they need to do. Um, if a guy does have catastrophic issues, we do have a um, um, explosion kit, for lack of a better term, which basically just gives him everything he needs to to resolve the issue with the injectors and fuel lines, fuel rails, the gaskets, the seals that he's going to need to be able to to repair it himself. Um, or if he needs, you know, if he doesn't want to tackle it, to, to allow the shop that he's got working on it to be able to just again one box of parts. Everything's there, and they can get that truck back on the road. The LML, the popularity of it, I, I think a lot of it comes to just the run. You know, they, they made that truck five years or that engine platform for five years. That's that's the longest that GM's ever stuck with anything. And obviously some small changes and refinements and adjustments through that time, but five years on the same engine platform is a tremendous time frame when you when you think that everything else might have been three or four years running. Yeah, and how many how many trucks they were cranking out and selling a year and and then, you know, you had you had the original owner and then the second owner and there's there's a lot of uh a lot of times it changes hands and you know, things pop up and one of the things I've always thought about the products and the way you guys produce solutions is how complete products are you had mentioned gaskets and and all the different things and it it's so i think refreshing you know for duramax owners out there where if you need the smallest part the smallest install component to be able to fix something it's in a kit so it's not like a surprise when you got it all torn apart in your garage on a saturday at you know 10 p.m that you need something else well that's that's a huge part of it a lot of a lot of our customers and a lot of your listeners also i'm sure you know, they need that truck to run. That's that's their that's their transportation, their work truck. And when they do get the time to tackle that repair or, or whatever job that needs to be done, we all know how frustrating it is to have to stop, run to a parts store and, and get whatever it is you're missing or, or need. And then you get into something is that, that the box stores don't cater to. You're not gonna run down to a to a you know, the auto parts store on the corner typically and find some of this stuff. So when he does take that weekend, that Saturday night, we want to make sure that everything that he's going to need is in that box that we send him to do a particular repair. And obviously there's going to be scenarios that we can't account for and, and things like that, but as much as possible, we, we want to make sure the guy's got everything he needs, even some of the special tools that it would take um, to do that. 
particular task that's being done. So I think we all we all want to just we don't want to have headaches and, and, and trip ups and things like that. So the more complete it can be, the, the better it is for everybody. I think the tools is probably one of the bigger points because like you said, you're not going to, be able to go down to the auto parts store and rent this particular tool for this particular job. But when you're on, you know, the merchant auto website and you're adding things to your cart, it's either in it or you can add it if you need to. And I think it's really helpful for not just, the truck owners, but also the the diesel repair shops that are out there as well. And I, I, I've been trying to check in with as many as I can over the last month or so, just see how they're doing and, and you know, just see how things are going out there all over the country. And one of the things that they have been telling me is how many people are bringing their trucks or dropping them off to be able to have these things done. And I think it really helps them as well because they're, you know, they're focused on getting the truck in, into the bay, getting it diagnosed, repaired back to the customer. And with that complete kit, it just makes it easy for the professionals as well. Well, yeah, but with everything going on out there, it does seem to be a good time for a lot of fleets, a lot of companies that, that have these trucks on the road all the time where they can get them in and get it fixed. So there's, there's definitely been an increase or it's, it sure seems like there's been an increase across the industry of, of a lot of those types of companies bringing in these trucks that are just on the road all the time for stuff that's been neglected. And then I talked to some shops as well, and I'm sure you've talked to a lot. And it doesn't seem like anybody's slowing down. These, you know, these 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 are things that need to run. They need to be reliable for these people. And to the point about the the completeness of the kit. Time is money when when you've got a truck on the hoist. That you know that that bay's worth you know eighty to one hundred and fifty dollars an hour, depending on your area and, and that type of thing. And the last thing anybody wants is to have a have a bay tied up with waiting on parts. So back to the completeness of those kits and trying to you know make sure our inventory is suited to the stuff that we know is going to move. And that's been a different challenge. So last fall we had with the GM uh, strike, <clears throat> we do we do run into some supply issues on some of that stuff. We're we're trying to pull from supplies that might not exist, uh, and that's hurt us a little bit. So we've we've restructured some and trying to put less reliance on those OE channels, and that's worked out well for us right now, so that we can still provide everything that we want with with an OE. Uh, level part or usually the same part and not have to wait on those supply chains because we just don't know what's going to happen on delays. Shipping right now is, I think everybody's kind of feeling that, that man, the, the shipping people out there, the, the delivery stuff is, is, is huge. And we've seen some of that delay, some of our uh, replenishment and some of our some of our stuff that we have to bring in, and we want to just hopefully avoid that step so that when somebody does need something from us that we can offer them, they're jumping ahead a little bit by not having to wait for us to get it. We've got it; it's on the shelf, ready to go, and we can get it out. You know, I want to say the same day, but what we're also running into is because of all of that added stress load on the, on, the, on the shipping chain, some of our stuff we've noticed is actually going next day um, just because of the schedules that the, that the uh, shipping companies are using. So the point is we want to get it to them as fast as possible. I think that's been one of the, one of the hardest things it's just with what's gone on the last few months or so far this year is as, as truck owners or even consumers, we're so used to, we add it to cart, depending how early we do it in the day, we get the tracking information at the end of the day. And there's so many other things that go into that. And when you were describing being able to keep those, those channels open and keep the parts flowing, how much work goes into that? Because these aren't, you know, typical times and there are delays with everything, whether it's ordering groceries or UPS or FedEx or USPS, even, you know, I've ordered some things, not even truck parts, and it takes two weeks to get it, whereas before it was maybe a week, or I could, you know, choose two-day air, and now it's not even an option, and just trying to accommodate all those things to keep customers, potential customers, and shops and distributors supplied with product is a, it's a, you know, a tremendous feat, and I'm sure a ton of work goes into that. 
it, it is a lot of work, especially when you add in the current state of things. Um, so we've only kind of really touched on what, what it's got to happen after it leaves our door. Well, to get it to the point where it can leave our door. So I imagine there's a lot of companies that are in the same boat that are in our industry. Uh, we're trying to keep everybody safe, the whole disinfecting thing and cleanliness. Um, but of what we've also got, half the staff is all working remote. So anytime somebody's calling in and, and chats with our sales guys or, or a lot of our office staff, uh, myself included, we're, we're set up in our, you know, side, side rooms of our house. Um, <clears throat> there, is, there is a crew at the shop, as, as, as small a crew as we can have and still function. But that's, that's added some challenges, and I think everybody's facing them, is all of a sudden we have to learn how to work remotely in, in an industry that typically doesn't have a lot of that. So we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing when the parts come in and being safe as far as cleanliness and not, um, I don't know how to put it in words, but we, we just want to take those extra precautionary steps along the way each way so that whatever we get in is, is not causing us any issues. And then the stuff that we go out, we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can so that we, we're limiting any of that spread or contact or, or any of the buzzwords that are being used today. So you add in the extra steps being taken there and a little bit smaller crew that's, that's physically in the building processing these orders. And it, it's... It is, it is a tremendous amount of work. They're really good group of group of people that are just not afraid to step up and do whatever it takes and, and make sure that people get the stuff they need as quick as they're used to getting it from us. And that's something that we really want to try and do our best to stay with is, is promptness, you know. Is it, well, it's a, such a fundamental change as well because you know, think about before, if you needed to check on something, you could – you know, go to the person's office, knock on the door, ask them, or, you know, you see them in the hall or in the shop or in the warehouse. And all of a sudden that changed so quick. And it's been really interesting to see the, the, uh, I'm not sure what the right word for it is, but so many companies and organizations that have been able to pivot and change and to work in the environment that, that you just mentioned with working remotely and, and then that that provides its whole other set of challenges and you know staying focused there's other distractions yeah and that was a huge challenge for us um i, I say huge i think we overcame it quite quickly is is to go from everybody in-house you know like I said, if you need something you run right next door to the office next to you mm -hmm. we're all remote or a majority of us are remote and you rely a lot on you know a web meeting uh email uh, Slack, we use Slack a ton. Just all these things to try and stay connected and not leave any gaps. We don't want people to notice any difference. If they call in and, and talk to one of the guys, it's just they, they shouldn't know the difference. And, and I think that's pretty huge is to try and keep that as smooth as possible and as streamlined as possible. And honestly, it's helped us as a business in, in some of our process efficiencies. We've been able to streamline a lot of things that, that's going to be that, that's good for us. So it's it, in a weird sort of way. It's it's definitely improved us, and it's it's good because having that ability to work remote for a lot of those positions ensures that it's it's going to continue to go. Um, you know, keeping the distance, keeping the contact down. And still having everybody being as, as completely um, efficient or, or productive as, as they as they were before. So that's what I was going to ask you: is if we were to you know kind of think ahead a little bit to where things aren't as hectic and uncertain in some ways as they are now, is how much does this change help you as a business owner and a leader in the industry and what you do for you know those processes and the ways that you can tackle you know, phone volume, email volume, all these things, it's got to be a tremendous help. It, it, it's, it's, like I said, there's a small learning curve to go with it, and I, it's, it's probably a big learning curve because we're still learning every day with it. Um, 
but it, but it's just all about learning that efficiency and and taking what we were really good at before and getting even better at it as far as handling all those needs, but now doing it from our own living room, so to speak, uh, <clears throat> and being able to stay in contact with, with people in the building and you know, whether it comes in on the website or, or over the phone, which is which is in a different part of the county is is where the order is processed. Um, and it just all flows through. Technology is a wonderful thing in that regard for sure. I don't know if we, you know, 10, 10, 15 years ago, if something like this happened, it would be a whole different sign, a whole different um, process or, or way of doing things for a lot of people. And, we're just fortunate enough to be able to take advantage of the technology that, that's available for for all of us. It's one of the things I've been recently just so, I mean, normally, you know, being able to, you know, call in and, and chat with someone, it's very, it's very kind of straightforward. And it, as far as the, the behind the scenes part of it, but I've really been taking time to jump into some of the apps and the programs and some of the things that are out there that make this so much easier to be able to connect with people all over the country or, or you know, even all over North America. And it's, it, it, you know, right now it can be kind of tough to focus on that because, you know, I want to go outside. I want to go do things. I want to want things back to the way they were. Right. But it just the, the, the potential that's there to make stronger companies and stronger processes so that, uh, you know, in the future, the service, the selection is even better than it was before. So making, I guess, making the best of a difficult situation and, and adapting. It definitely makes you appreciate the things that we all took for granted before. Mm -hmm. As a company, we would always meet Friday morning for breakfast at a, at a local restaurant there in, in the town that we're in. <clears throat> and we just took it for granted. I, I firmly believe we took it for granted. It was just what we did on Friday mornings before work. Now, we don't we don't have that ability. We don't have the you know stick around for for an hour or two after work on Friday and and you know have a few adult beverages just to recap the week. It's it's a it's changed things in a lot of ways. <clears throat> We're all obviously looking forward to getting back to the old way, but at the same time, it's it's opened up these doors that. I don't know. I don't like to talk on the phone. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm guilty of that. I, I'm a, I'm a text, an email, a message. I don't. I, I'm not a fan of talking on the phone myself personally. But I'm reaching out to people in the industry or or people that I may not talk to in a while. And hey, you know, what are you guys seeing? How's things going? Mm -hmm. What's new? Uh, I don't want to waste a bunch of people's time because everybody's still busy. But it's nice to just touch base. And we we so often don't do that, especially if you. If you don't spend a bunch of time on social media, it's even you know you, you feel further distant from from different ways of connecting with people. But the biggest thing is just keeping keeping the company together. That's definitely been a little bit of a challenge because you don't see everybody every day. Um, we have we have video meetings that that have definitely helped, and we we were doing them at first with just audio and screen shares, and then we realized you know. We nobody wants to be on camera and and be in front of a screen, but it's amazing how much different the meeting went or or the discussions go when you can look at the other person and everybody can see each other and facial expressions mean the world, especially when we're all cooped up right now. So oh, yeah. we need that connection with everybody. It's been a real transition for myself in that regards as well because I I don't really like to talk on the phone that much. And, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm pretty much introverted and I can entertain myself. And, you know, I do like to meet, you know, with friends and people, you know, in the industry or, you know, things like that. I like to chat with people, but I found myself over the last month, like, I just want to see someone say, Hey, how's your day going? You know, <laughs> <laughs> things where before I'd be like, eh, I really don't want to talk to my neighbor or something like that. You know, I'm waving to them and everything. And I think that's in, in this you know, the, the diesel community or the diesel industry, and especially with a company, is that's that's something that I know I totally lost sight of. I never thought of it. And now it's like I have a different perspective. I realize it's important to just you know, pick up the phone and call someone and say, hey, how's it going? You know, what have you been up to? How's everything going? Or, hey, what can I do to make your job easier, you know, with the audio or with graphics or something like that? And it's it's been a growing experience. 
I think the guys that have been around, the guys and gals that have been around this industry a really long time, I don't think anybody would disagree that a big part of what drives us in this industry is the people in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the trucks are neat and the events are fun and that kind of thing, but to me, going to an event is mostly comes down to just being able to see everybody, see all these people that we connect with and, and know and, um, <clears throat> you know, meet people that you've never met before, but you might have talked to a bunch online or, or friends from across the country, whether it be something like SEMA or PRI or UCC or any of the other various events around the country. I have more fun just connecting with everybody. And the trucks are just part of the reason we're there, but the people are what makes it. And hopefully our summer's not completely lost and we get to we get to see these people again that we all you know, enjoy spending time with. Uh, it, yeah, it definitely has changed the last few months because you do take those things for granted. And, and just face-to-face -face is, is, is definitely going to have a whole new meaning when all this stuff passes. Well, it's always so hard, too, to get together with so many people. And, you know, you've been in in the diesel industry since 2004, so, you, you, you know, I'm sure there's a ton of people that you know and, have um, you know you guys have grown your businesses together competed against each other you know different things like that and it's so hard to step away normally whereas with an event you know whether it's UCC or or any other one out there you get to see all these people and with that you know taken away this spring it's it's tough and we've had to get creative with you know how do we connect with people or you know how do we how do we you know see what's going on or hey can I help you with anything um, how, how are you guys handling this? You know, what kind of ideas can I, can I, you know, get from these other organizations, these other people and then apply to myself. And it's, and, and it's nice to see everybody kind of come together on that, you know, that, that humanity side of things. Uh, what can I do? What do you need help with? Or how, how can I make this like, like you brought up how everybody's willing to, kind of step up and help everybody else out <clears throat> in which in turn also brings us closer together i think as well yeah it's, it was i think oh right around the end of february or march i was talking with lenny reed from dynamite diesel products and it, it wasn't about diesel he was talking about it, fitness and working out and it being a stress reliever and everything and i was like lenny I, I haven't done any of that in years like i've been so busy and you know kind of wrapped up in my own stuff i never thought about it but just that conversation i had on a friday afternoon it, it made me stop and think, Hey, maybe I need to do this. Maybe I need to dust off the, the, the weights that are in the basement and, you know, the treadmill and start doing these things. And it was just, you know, a random phone call that, that I had with him or, you know, other, other people that it's just, uh, it's uh, <laughs> I had a conversation with Lenny probably a couple of weeks ago and I just texted him out of the blue. And honestly, I think it was, I listened to that podcast that you guys uh, had done and I'm like, I haven't talked to Lenny in a minute. So I shot him a text, and he calls me up, and we chit chat, and we did. We we didn't talk about work that much. I mean, we we did. We want you know we're we're genuinely concerned for each other's well being, but we did. We talked about the exercise thing, and he's telling me about <laughs> these rubber bands that he's been using for for you know some of his routines and whatnot. Uh, it's just fun to. It, we all know each other on a personal level to some extent, and if we don't. We should, yeah. because that's that's what that's what holds it all together. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it, I know it's tough. We were chatting a little bit about this before the podcast about L five P stuff, and I think we, we do get questions from time to time from L five P owners, like, "Hey, you know, what's new? What's coming up?" And I think we would agree that maybe the, they're just still so new that the demand or the issues quite haven't presented themselves. But I wanted to ask you. You know, are there any particular things that you think might be an issue with the L5Ps or are, you know, are, are there any, are there any fixes that, that you see for some common problems on, on the newer Duramax trucks? Nothing that we've really seen a ton of. I, I don't know what's going to be the failure point on those just yet. And I'm, and I'm sure there has been some failures on them of various things. I, I don't know what the what the what the future is going to be on them. I, I know they're a popular platform for a lot of the aftermarket companies with uh, the the bolt-on type stuff, um, 
and all that stuff will always be popular. But as far as the repair side of it, it's hard to say. I, I, if, I, there's probably people listening right now that are screaming into whatever they're listening <laughs> on to, to tell me that, oh, I keep seeing this go bad or keep seeing that go bad. We need a fix for this. And if you see that, get a hold of me because I would like to be involved and hopefully we can make that better. But to us, it hasn't been a huge platform. I've got I've got one that I drive every day. At, it's a 19 with 36,000 miles and Sort of changing the fluids on it, it hasn't needed anything, and I, and frankly, I haven't done much to it either, other than you know uh, some towing stuff and a, and a pulsar from edge, and it just runs every day. I, I I realize that I'm getting older, and my preferences are changing. I don't want to listen to a straight pipe LB7 as I'm driving every day, and I don't want tires that make the slightest bit of noise going down the road because then I can't hear what I'm talking on my phone or listening to something or, you know, geez, I don't want the Speedo to be off because I like everything to work just so. <laughs> so <laughs> it makes you feel old in a hurry. It's like, if I can't start my phone from my truck, then this is just pathetic. <laughs> I had this huge crisis within myself when I was a truck. I was like, you know, do I want to straight pipe this like I used to? And I... I was debating with myself whether I'm becoming more refined or if I'm becoming my father because I want it quiet. <laughs> oh, man, I just I don't want to listen to the truck. There's a time and place for it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love to hear the sound of a uh, of an engine and, and making noise and that kind of thing. But when I'm sitting in the truck going down the road for even a half hour, I don't want to listen to it. That is not what I got in that truck for was to listen to it, make a bunch of growly noises and the tires singing to me. And... I'm going to call it refined because I think that's a better way of saying it. So I think that's what we are, Patrick. We're just becoming refined. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell myself that, and uh, I think I think that'll that'll uh, that'll settle the debate. But I think that GM has done a tremendous job. I mean, really, Ford and, and Ram have too. But just how far these trucks have come with refinement technology and quality that you know, even in the emissions era how much they progress from an LMM to an L5P and the reliability of the systems has, has been tremendous. That, that has for sure. The, the early EGR valves have, were just notorious problematic. And then you put the DPFs on and, and, and that kind of thing. And they were just, again, problematic. And there's no wonder people wanted to take all that stuff off, especially when they went bad because who's footing the bill? Yeah. If it works, I'm a firm believer and don't mess with it. Uh, referring to the newer stuff, I my, you know, I, I don't mind putting DEF in. We put a 55 gallon drum in a pump, so I don't have to screw with it. I don't have to try and find it. And DEF is cheap when you buy it in bulk like that, and it's not even that much. So if that's the worst case, my, my biggest my biggest gripe is when I spill the DEF fluid all over and get that white crusty stuff underneath the hood. <laughs> just not putting it in. It's just it's just a mess it makes because. Apparently, in my mature and refined self, I'm sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that too. I'm starting to get more, more sloppy with things. I'm like, eh, eh, I'm not going to worry about it. But now, all this time on my hands, I've been detailing engine bays and undercarriages and everything else. So it's, uh, you know, I've been able to to catch up on on all that stuff. But it uh, it's been it's been great to chat with you, Eric. Catch up with you, and then also. You know, get the the feedback that that you're seeing as you know an industry leader, a veteran of it, and perspectives and things that I know a lot of a lot of the the shops and other companies and and even people in their respective industries that just you know are into diesel trucks, they're in the same boat and they're thinking how do I to accommodate uh, these new challenges or you know what's my viewpoint or you know maybe I need to you know be able to you know, get this project truck that I've had up and going or do this maintenance that, you know, i got these few weeks that I can do it. So it was, uh, it was great to chat with you. Hopefully, you know, this summer there's some events going on and, and, uh, everyone can catch up and have some fun watching trucks go down the track or sled pulling. And... I, 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 absolutely. I'm looking forward to, to, to seeing people and reconnecting. I say reconnecting. We're, we're only a relatively short amount of time into this temporary normal. Mm-hmm. I, hopefully the summer is salvageable and, and we can connect like that. But 
Otherwise, <clears throat> I mean, we've we got avenues. Other, you know, we, the podcast is, is is great to chat with people and and just you know have everybody else listen in on our conversation. I guess is what it comes down to. That's what's it's so fun. It's almost like being at an event where it can be so tough to chat with a bunch of people, um, but you know, on a podcast, it's one of the things I've always enjoyed is. You know, I get to ch- chat with you and other business leaders and truck owners, and they tell me about restorations and just so many things that I wish I could do more of. And it's it, it's really fun. Kept me going, you know, while uh, while everything's been changing. And I've, I love seeing what you guys are doing and the you know, the way that you guys are accommodating this and, and keeping trucks on the road. So I definitely look forward to chatting with you again, you know, this summer and and uh, you know maybe see you at uh, at UCC or one of the other events and and. Uh, catch up and talk about our our refinement <laughs> there you go absolutely don't forget diesel fans if you own an lb7 to an l5p need to get some work done on it maintain it get it ready for you know work or summer fall just keep it running in tip-top shape make sure and check out merchant automotive you can find them on instagram facebook and if you have any questions give them a call they're duramax experts that's what they specialize in from you know maintenance items transmission upgrades powertrain upgrades and everything in between Till next time, keep the shiny side up. Shiny side up. Shiny side up.